This week on Ignition, we sample the latest in Yacht Rock. When you think of big luxury cruise ship coupes, it's hard to avoid the Mercedes-Benz SL, partly because of how long it's been in production and how well it serves its class, but also because, well, it's big and luxurious. And that's something that's always bothered me, because SL stands for Sport Leicht. And while I've butchered that pronunciation, it means Sport Lightweight. That's kind of an ironic title when you consider that the last SL we tested weighed nearly 4,200 pounds. This new one's different though, it's made almost entirely of aluminum, and as a result, it's lighter, despite being longer and wider. It also plays host to any number of engineering feats, whether it's active suspension or a glass roof that polarizes the sun. And on top of being lighter, it's faster. This car here, the SL550, is the base car, and it uses a twin-turbo, direct-injected, 4.7 liter V8 that develops 429 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. 516, that's more than the M5, and that's more than most Corvettes make. Traction, then, might be an issue. But it's not. Launching the SL is about as easy as it gets. You select sport mode on the suspension, sport mode on the transmission, and then you just roll on the throttle aggressively. You don't mat it, you just roll on smoothly. Traction control takes care of the rest. And it's really hard to convey just how fast this thing is, but it is very fast indeed. Zero to 60, four seconds, and we'll hit the quarter mile in 12 and a half seconds at 114 miles an hour. The top end pull is insane. I, <laughs> it blows me away. And now we begin our 60 to zero braking test. It does get to a stop in a hurry. Our best stop from 60 took 105 feet. The power out of this SL always blows me away. But when you enter a corner, it gets a bit interesting. Because what happens is this has a variable rate steering wheel. And when you're on center, when you're just off center, the steering wheel does what you would expect. But then when you turn in hard, the steering rate increases dramatically. So I find myself at times backing out of steering inputs that I've already put in. Combine that with a super torquey engine and a very sharp throttle response, and that makes for a car that's pretty interesting at the limit. And not interesting in a fun way, but interesting in a way that makes you really second guess how you're approaching a corner. You feel like you can always get it right on that line of oversteer, right in that 0 0.5, 10 degree slip, like there, but then you can never really hold it because you get too much boost or the steering screws up or something. You know, there's one thing that the SL reminds me of. It's kind of like a mini SLS with the super torquey engine, super aggressive throttle response, and steering that's a little too busy for my taste, or a little too aggressive for my taste. <laughs> so now you're probably wondering, why are we reviewing this? Why not a GTR? Why not a ZR1? Why not four Subaru BRZs? There's a very good reason for that, and it's because there's something just unquestionably cool about the big, giant, powerful SL Benz. You know, this car is not a sports car, but it's not trying to be either. It wants to be the big, comfortable, and luxurious yacht out there on the, in the sea of cars that you see on the road every day. It doesn't want to be a little race car. It wants to be in it for the long haul, the comfortable ride home after your power lunch, after the big meeting. This is the car for the 1%. There's a lot to like about the SL, 
but I still can't get over the styling. I mean, the car looks like it was developed by three different people who never communicated until the very end when they put it all together. The front doesn't match the middle, doesn't match the rear, and it just has these odd proportions that sit oddly. The only time it looks good is when you're about three inches away from the nose looking straight down. The rest of the time, it's just kind of questionable. I'm sure it's much more beautiful underneath the skin. I mean, this car is mostly aluminum. It's made of these gigantic cast aluminum pieces that must just be stunning to look at. You know, and likewise, the engineering that goes into the rest of the car is very cool as well. I mean, on top of heated and cooled seats, we also get something called air scarf, which basically is a vent in the back of the seat that gently blows warm air on the back of your neck. And it feels great on a cool day like we're in now. Straight above us is your typical glass sunroof, but it's not just any sunroof. It's something Mercedes-Benz calls magic sky control. That's kind of a silly name, but it has a very cool feature. You press this button here, and the roof polarizes like a pair of sunglasses would, blocking out all the sun. Press it again, and it's clear. It makes a huge difference when you're driving down the road. Another thing that makes the chassis cool is not just the fact that it's made mostly of aluminum, but the fact that when they were building it, they realized there's all these empty holes in it that could serve a purpose. So what do they do? Well, those tubes and holes in the chassis actually act as resonators for the sound system. So you don't have these big bulky subwoofers in the back of the car. You have the sound being resonated in the chassis itself. It's one of the first cars to do that. You know, this is a convertible, so there is something we really have to do. And that's drop the top. I don't know what it is about dropping the top in any car, as long as you can do it, that just makes you want to drive harder and have a lot more fun. Maybe it's the sound of the engine, maybe it's the wind, it's the smells going by, but it's hard to deny you want to drive more like a hooligan when you can smell and hear what's going on outside of you. You know, if they were going to do a remake of Glengarry Glen Ross, this is the car that Alec Baldwin would have drove to show how good he was as a salesperson. But then again, it may not be. You see, someone at Mercedes thinks 516 pound-feet of torque isn't enough. So there are two more powerful versions coming. The first is the SL63 with a 5.5 liter turbo V8 making 590 pound-feet of torque. And then there's the SL65 with a twin turbo V12 that makes 738 pound-feet of torque. It's almost as if they're making up numbers at that point. While the SL550 may be the first step down the rabbit hole when it comes to power output, I'd argue it's a very good first step. You put the confused styling aside and you find that what's under the sheet metal is the stuff that does the SL name justice. And I'd argue that there's no better sport yacht on the road today.